welcome to the Underhold. I'm Robert. I am Sinclair, aka Legal Priest, Rob C. Gresham. And I have a couple notes here on what we're going to talk about. Uh, I just old watched... Old but goody, right? Uh, an old but important. I mean, <laughs> that's, a, that's a clue that this is not a good film. I'm but not a, putting Hidden Gem on this unless you convince film. me that it must be, because it's not without value. Uh, Crackle is a free service Sony has that's just a streaming service, but it's free. So anybody can watch it. You don't have a link down in the description. You just have to have internet. See? The thing hey, is chiming. Same we, got some, we got some live viewers right now. Can, can, go, bring those comments in. We like to hear them. <laughs> Dork. <laughs> but uh, Johnny Mnemonic came out like in 94? I don't think it was that far back. I want to say 97. 97? You probably okay. looked that part of for sure. It's a, a cyberpunk movie. So you think like there's cyberpunk 2077 coming out soon with Keanu Reeves. This is and this is a Keanu Reeves cyberpunk movie. movie. And for a long time, it seemed like he was gonna he was that guy because he started yeah. with Gian, Johnny Mnemonic, yeah. and then it was boom, The Matrix. The Matrix. And you're like, oh, he just yeah. does these sciencey yeah. movies, and then whoa, The Matrix. That changed everything. Didn't now, it? now Johnny Mnemonic, though, is actually the screenplay and the original story is yeah. by William Gibson. By William Gibson, yep. The actual cyberpunk creator writer of the general genre yeah in a lot of ways you, you could say that he is that grandfather with yeah. uh was it neuromancer burning chrome uh later mona lisa overdrive or maybe in the between there uh this is the visionary guy. really myself, yeah i read so a lot of wayne so. gibson i ran the cyberpunk rpg uh you can find that at drive through rpg.com so go check that out <laughs> yeah. link in the description um, but the story is just a short story originally, right? Yeah, it was only <clears throat> about 16 pages. Okay. And the concept behind the short story was this, he's a courier, a mnemonic courier, mm -hmm. meaning that he implants data into chips in his brain. Yeah. So now we're like, oh, he's got a flash drive in his fucking hairline? Cool. Like, now it's easy. But back, you know, 1982 or whatnot, when this story was now written. It's, now, it's funny, this movie, I don't know if the book takes place in the same year, it takes place in 2021. Mm -hmm. The far unknown yeah. future of twenty twenty one. Because in nineteen eighty two, that was for you know we figured forty years ago. <laughs> yeah. Like we're we're thinking. I mean, what is yeah. it twenty nineteen right now? We're like ah twenty fifty nine. That's sounds... far flung future where they have video pay phones. Let's hear what else I got here. Uh, yeah, I mean everything that William Gibson said was going to happen happened. Cigarettes. There's no vaping. <laughs> <It's still laughs> smokes. But uh, in that in his future, they're all flavored. Oh. So it's very close. And so there's a lot of things that we ha we literally live in this cyberpunk future that he predicted. We have the internet. We we go on it daily. Our lives are there just like he thought we were going to have. It's not so much a um, like a 3D flying through cyberspace well, with avatars. This movie totally thing. has this like really old school 3D the concepts like, behind that, like yeah. the I want my MTV music video or <laughs> through the mind's eye if you haven't heard of that you gotta yeah. check out through the mind's eye it's like student project so uh, essentially this guy is it's, he's an information courier <laughs> you're supposed to get this information from one spot to the next spot like any old courier would do and like corporate espionage and the problem is is that his hard drive is not maxed out like or it's or rephrase it's maxed out and it's an older model so yeah, it, it has can't a contain the whopping technology. 80 gigabytes of space yeah in the 1997 <laughs> that's <a> crazy amount <laughs> if you figure that they made the entire abyss movie on like 570k or mb yeah something like that like that sounds amazing 80 gigabytes i'm like i've got that in my cell phone you know and what's it filled with pictures of cats <laughs> you know, kind of cats too. Uh, yeah. uh, and the job that they want him to do uh, is to hold 320 gigabytes of data. Yeah, so he's he way overloaded. Hired by some people, he's not sure what they are, but they don't seem to be the usual gangstery types that are usually involved in this corporate espionage type world. Um, yeah, they seem to be actually more of like freedom fighters, or that's what it seems like to me in well, the film. Yeah, now not in the short story. <laughs> now in the film, another thing that I just thought was kind of funny is when they ask him what his name is, he goes Mr. Smith, and I totally made me think of Agent Smith. Yeah, the like two <laughs> years later, he's Mr. Smith. Uh, and in the books, he just his name he just gave all the time was just Johnny. Yeah, 
And so a lot of times, oh, you're just Johnny. And they use and they, that. They, they do. They literally call him just yeah, Johnny. Yeah, so they give him that the in the movie. So there's a couple of good throwbacks. Mm-hmm. But to me, the most memorable scene in the short story begins... Johnny Mnemonic is going to this hotel in Tokyo, Shanghai, something like that. Maybe it's Hong Kong. He's going up the elevator, and he's got his hand in this duffel bag that's filled with socks. Like, it's just, there's a slit in the back for his hand to kind of just go into. And the more I've thought about it, I was like, how do you hold the duffel bag with the hand slot? So I'm thinking he's holding it like this, and maybe his hand is going in this way. You know? Because i got to reread read the story to get that. But he's got his, he's basically walking in armed, super ready. The courier deal almost goes to shit like immediately, so he's got to blast his way out of this place with the hand in the sh- shotgun in his duffel bag full of socks. That's fucking funny and cool, and, and visually it takes up like two pages of the sixteen-page book or short story. So it's like so much attention is played to this. I don't think that whole moment. Not in the movie all, yeah. ever. Johnny and Monica in the movie is a coward. Super like selfish the coolest character. action. So this, I think the action's not great in the movie in no, general. No, it's not. Good. It's so uh, but what it does have is one of the people who's like trying to hunt him down to take his head to to get what the three hundred twenty gigabytes of and information. And when he cut his head off to get that data, um, is they have Mitakashi. this thumb. Well, that's right. who he hired. Beat Takashi hires these people. Yeah. But I'm like, but, you got, that's, it yeah. was such a cool, that was a cyberpunk moment to me. Like, yeah. Takashi's running the, and he's Mr. Taka, Takahashi, so it's like yeah. a little close. But um, he didn't really get to shine too much, not so too much. It, he could almost and he has been really English. any actor in it, so his charisma just wasn't quite there for yeah. him. One of the people he does hire, though, has this thumb with, like, a razor, or a... a like, nano wire. A ni- nano wire that comes out of it that, you know, is bright and shiny and... So he uses it as a thing. garage. So there's some the all right, thing. all right moments of action so concepts yeah it's just slow like yeah. this this weapon that the guy has and he's able to like fucking triple cut some cat to where he like slices all comic book like with the meat you know that <laughs> uh but he himself is not very memorable he's just like rah, 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 rah. Yeah. i'm like do you run stuff at the, the casting like, isn't the fuck? great with the movie yeah. on a lot of levels and it I reminds me of what they do nowadays like yeah. i think if we were to look this up i mean johnny monica ultimately was a failure 30 million dollar film maybe about 20, 20 a little less but yeah we're, we're watching it for free on crackle it it, it is out there yeah and um, you're gonna find um, it william movies. gibson from what well, i did read that he said that they re-edited it so that there was less humor in it I also feel that maybe it just wasn't great in the way he wrote it. If they edited it for less humor, that terrifies me. (laughs) Because this movie is goofy in a lot of ways. Like I said, miscasting all of its spot. Yeah, so Keanu, there's like the scene where there's a heavy scene in it that feels like, uh, almost like it should have been delivered by the American Psycho character. Oh yeah, Uh, Patrick Patrick Bateman Bateman moment. where, Where, and he has this big uh monologue on top of a hill and you know it's supposed to be heavy and just show that he's like a dickhead or something like this is his breakdown moment yeah just, and it oh, just Stella. falls flat it's comical it's like sitting there i want oh, oh geez it was like i want room service i want to get my shirts pressed yeah. like to do it the fucking and shanghai that actually had a potentially Good. It was potentially a good scene yeah. with the right actor and the right director. The directing is uh, yeah. Flat. I think Keanu Reeves now probably a better actor for that yeah. part. Keanu Reeves then was like th- this character seemed petty, sniveling, yeah. cowardly, I, hard to root for. In the film, yeah. he's hard to root for, and so I'm like, I don't care if what you're up to. Why just give me the stuff and get out of here? And at some I point, the good guy should come. Just set. those type of actors that have the charisma that can really just do bad movies and still kind of steal a scene. And then they kept having like. The quirky, not quite actor in way too many different roles. Yeah, you get like Henry uh, Rollins is Henry this, Rollins uh, and Ice T. He's the ice ri- or the what they call him Ripper Docs. One that. of those two should have been some character actor with like ridiculous charisma. The other one could have been fine. It doesn't matter if you take out Ice T or Rollins. Yeah. One of the two should have been gone, and Every, the other they should always have been get that a, a yell moment. Yeah, the, they all have that. One of the other one just moment. needed to be like a, a cheap but very charismatic character actor. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Henry. The Henry Rollins part should have been a more subdued because that's I think was an overtop part because yeah. he's he starts talking about the it, what they call it like NAS in the movie or something like that. It was a neuro yeah NAS seizure. Yeah. Shit so what it does turn out what his head has is this uh, cure for NAS, which is an affliction that everybody seems to have from the radiation yeah. of 
cyber now it's the autism but yeah yeah no totally it's basically what it is, is people are having these seizure effects from over technology yeah. and too in many the cyber giant overacting stuff. moment he's like <gasps> this causes it this now when i say it. character actors of all people somebody who isn't a good character actor actually does do a great character actor part here and there should the have dolphin been dolph lundgren Dolph Lundgren does the best part of the movie. From the Church of Retransfiguration, re yeah. something like that. He's a complete cyber, he's cyber psychotic. Yeah. So he's, he's just, all borged out he's, and he thinks he's Jesus or a Jesus yeah. preacher. Come to me, sinner. And he's, he's paid to, he needs money to keep himself all borged out and he's paid to get that information back. Yeah. Um, he's amazing in it. He's really fun and they should have had another actor having that type of performance in like Rollins role. Or I think that's role. what they wanted to do. I think if you, when you look at how Dolph Lundgren played it, he's got that, mm -hmm. all right, we brought in a cool character actor or a cool um, persona and he's going to... But he's never been persona that charismatic in anything before then. So really, he except played for maybe up. Universal Soldier partially. Yeah, I think a little bit in that. My, But my... My point was, I think maybe that's why Ice T and Henry Rollins' characters are so over, yeah. overdone or hyperbolic, yeah. is because you had that such that great performance by Dolph Lundgren, yeah. which, yeah, yeah. say a lot. Dolph, it's '97, you know. We didn't quite know that he was the MIT scientist. Maybe he had just broken up with Grace Jones. Who knows? <laughs> was that was that his? Uh, that was his old Yeah, was, oh, okay. she got on the job on a uh, James Bond, the uh, License to Kill movie. I think that was his first film. Oh, okay. So, and this was like that's He Man. This was like the last feature film, I guess, he had for, until like 2010. Yeah, well, that was in the theater. That's what I mean. Yeah. Oh, it's, lots of straight to video films. Oh, well. yeah. So, and a lot of those movies will play for one night somewhere. So, they're like, I came out of the theater. I had a premiere. <laughs> Fuck you. Yeah. Like Judd Nelson. You know, I got a Judd Nelson. <laughs> this is in Bolivia for like three days. The last three time days. I saw a Judd Nelson in a movie, he looked like. like Who's that friend of Simon Pegg's? Nick Frost or oh, something yeah, like yeah. He looks like he had been stung by all the bees. <laughs> and there's not too much else to say about the movie. Really bad score. It really did not help. Yeah. The I think if you're a fan of the genre, and if you were a player of the game... But it had a virus, and it should have a lot more of that. <laughs> the, yeah, the movie is is poorly done. It's all yeah. over the place. It has It's got a, it's idea salad. It has so yeah. many awesome ideas that if you're a fan of the genre and you're a fan of William Gibson, you know what they are. Like, we're instantly going, oh, he's a cyber-psychotic, over board that that's guy. what's, like, kind of important that about it. That doesn't play is, out if you don't know that that's the genre, you know. Is It's pretty close uh, representation of cyberpunkness. Mm -hmm. uh, Almost so. to a stereotype of it. Yeah. You know, and now you would look at it and go, this is sci-fi channel cyberpunk. It's yeah. got every cliche of cyberpunk but that's because this is the godfather i mean he yeah. made this genre you know and they show little things like when he's uh, uh going through the net as it were like him figuring out decryption is almost like these hand ciphers of puzzles that he's doing by hand yeah it's like a cipher them. like that minority yeah. report yeah. kind of thing where they're like we're gonna be able to grab stuff it's not a movie around. without value but it's not like one of those oh my god you have to see it but i do think it's important to remember it or at least have an idea of what it is. And if you do this is the movie it. that convinced the Wachowskis that after Will Smith turned them down for the Matrix, that Kevin or that Keanu Reeves might be a good replacement. Mm -hmm. So even though it was bad, yeah. it it was enough there for was Keanu Reeves there. to get the Matrix. Yeah, there there's there's a lot of great ideas in the movie. Yeah, that's what I said. it's it's idea salad. It shows the genre. And it's it's like here's everything about it. Here's what the dark cyber cyberpunk future can be. Mm -hmm. um, it's just because it's so much salad. Mm -hmm. It's hard to find the good nuggets. There's a couple of little factions. It has an info dump right at the beginning, yeah. trying to explain all the different factions. And any movie like, that starts like that, in, I can't stand. In its own jargon too. So that's like yeah, a, even Star Wars. Man. So it's an info dump with a bunch of jargon of like the low techs and things like that. Yeah, it's a lot to take in. You're like, yeah. all right, if you're just getting to your seat with the popcorn and you miss that beginning, you're you're behind. Uh, that you're behind big time. And this also leads me to something I do want to watch again a little later, possibly is Nemesis. Nemesis. I would Nemesis like to revisit another great that. one for that. Oliver Gruner. Yeah. You know, there's I don't know if it holds up, but, but um, it might. Yeah, because it was low budget for its time, even. Yeah. So we'll, we'll have to check that. It might out. be a hidden gem. It might, might be on Crackle. Yeah. That's got to have some. 
But I think that, that pretty much does it, I think, for that video. So if you're a fan of Giant Mnemonic, if you like the, the short story, if you're a fan of the movie, I mean, comment down below. One of the coolest things I remember about Giant Mnemonic when the videotape came out, because that's how old it is, yeah. VHS, they were all orange. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, so like when you rented it, it also it really So I'm in the pinball lot, and there's a really great Johnny Mnemonic pinball machine. Yeah, so it this, looks awesome. It's a, visually, it's a great looking good. movie. Yeah. It's a good it's style over substance, which is actually another cyberpunk yeah. you know, aesthetic. Um, it it has everything you want as far as the genre. If you're not sure what the genre is like, this is the genre. Everything in this movie is what it wants to spotlight. That said, the movie doesn't tell a great story, doesn't have the best cast, uh, is an important milestone, eh, in, in probably for going into using uh, computer animation. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think with that, it's, it's an a interesting moment movie. in time. Uh, so Let's comment below, tell us what we got wrong. Below. Yep, and uh, if you like this, let us know. If you want us to do more of these interesting movies or if you want us to do more sci-fi some cult classics or if there's something that just you would like us to see and talk about let us know yeah, come yeah. and watch for the underholds <laughs> all right